Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Do you still struggle with demand forecasting? In this video, I will show you a complete Excel based demand forecasting tool that cover moving average, exponential smoothing and regression analysis. It's fully automated, accurate and perfect for the supply chain and sourcing managers. Let's dive in. So here we are trying to get an Excel prototype in which we can create forecast with the input data in terms of actual sales. Okay. So here you can see that uh, we have an input data tab. And in this input data tab, you can have uh, your SKUs uh, and uh, you might be having a price around it, some uh, promo index, whether you are running a promo or not. Then you have a month where you can check that uh, what sales you have occurred at which time, at which month. And then there's an actual sales number. Whenever you're going to get any input data, you need to make sure that this data is normalized and harmonized as well. So there are some guidelines then how you can do the data normalization and harmonization. So let us move to our first way of calculating forecast, which is moving average. So here uh, we have this sheet for the moving average and uh, it is a very easy and you know, very popular way uh, people do this forecast and sometimes it is very accurate. So here, what actually we do, we just need to check that, okay, how much month of uh, past sales we need to consider and then take an average of them and predict that this will be the demand is going to be in our next month. So let's say if I'm saying that this is uh, my moving average window size, which is four. So what does it mean? It means that I need to consider last four months average in order to get the forecast number in my current month okay so uh, just to tell you that how does this sheet work in this sheet i will be having a user input where i will be getting the uh, moving average window size from the user and then i will be selecting a uh, skus so i have done nothing i have just uh, created some data validation rule if i go there and uh, just to show you that i just created certain list in cell drop down and this particular uh, selection is coming from this input data screen only anyway so here user can select any number or any sk number basically just to check that uh, which item is interested in in order to calculate uh, forecast accuracy you can see that uh, if i am putting some number like uh, three okay uh, you can see that number is changing and uh, let's say uh, if i am selecting some number like uh, seven or eight so you can see that uh, the accuracy and may value is also changing. So what calculation I'm doing here? So I'm doing nothing is just, let's say if I'm selecting a eight period here. So if I'm going to take the period of eight, I'm going to take the average, which is 509.75. You can also check that, okay, it is coming with the 509.75 automatically. Then we are just calculating the error and the absolute error. And we are calculating the MAP. It's very easy. And then one minus MAP is your accuracy. So why does this number matter that how much time and how you are going to decide this number? So if you think that your demand is quite smooth, you have a stagnant kind of demand or uh, you very well know that uh, your demand is cyclic, that it has a cyclicity of uh, three months or four months, then you can have that number and take the average for it. Okay. So let's say, you know, it's a pretty smooth demand and it uh, always remains same or more or less same or it is at a particular trend, which is an upper trend or a lower trend, then you can go with the moving average. Obviously, you need to check that, okay, if I'm going to uh, take three months or four months, then which one is going to work with me well. So you can do some simulation here by creating certain scenarios. Let's okay, what if I'm going to take two as an average, then I'm getting 90% accuracy. And if I'm moving to three, then I'm getting 88%, then it might be uh, good to stick with the two months as a moving average. And you can see in the sheet uh, here, if you're selecting three, the number is starting from the fourth month. If you are going to select number four, the number is going to start with the fifth month. Why it is happening? Because for any calculation, you need four months of data. And if you are in this particular month, you will not be getting four data points because you will be only getting three data points. Correct. So whenever you're going to get four full data points, then only you, you are able to calculate the forecast around it. So this is how you can calculate the moving average. It's very easy to create. Now moving to exponential smoothing. Exponential smoothing is also a very important and uh, uh, very much used uh, way of calculating the forecast. In exponential smoothing, uh, 
we use a uh, one smoothening factor which is alpha so how does this alpha work let me uh, go through with the formula so this is the formula in which we have forecast for the current month which is let's say last month plus one and then you need to take the actuals multiply by the alpha so here actual we are using of the last month and then one minus alpha last month forecast so how does this work this alpha is your uh, smoothing factor sometime it called as a uh, label factor and uh, this way of calculating forecast called as holt model okay so we have multiple uh, other exponential smoothing as well like double exponential smoothing triple exponential smoothing uh, which we called as a holt winter formula we can calculate them in the forecast excel as well if you want a video on that kindly comment uh, triple exponential or double exponential i will create a video on that anyway moving ahead so how does it work if your alpha value is higher it means it is going to give you more weightage on the last actual and if it is lower it is going to give more weightage to the last forecast so if you think your supply chain or your forecast is moving and highly dependent on the what is happening in the recent time correct it's not in the cyclicity it's either a, on a trend or any uh, maybe a lower trend or upper trend it's better to go with the high alpha okay so the forecast quality is highly dependent on the selection of alpha high alpha values and it forecast that respond quickly to the recent data and if you think that the demand is pretty much a stable and there is a particular pattern to a demand that it follow a particular cycle then it's better to go with the lower and a moderate alpha so that you can create your forecast sensibly and uh, in a cyclicity or a standard uh, kind of uh, demand you will be getting right numbers okay and how does this impact let's say if you are running some promo and you got some high demand in the last month and you are running with the high alpha value then in the current month also you will get high forecast value so that high forecast value is not favorable because you ran certain promotion at that point of time okay so that is why you will end up having too much inventory in your system okay so now how to go ahead with this so first you need to set certain value of alpha and let's say in this example let's say again we are going with the sku1 and uh, as soon as i'm changing my numbers which is like i'm moving from point 3 to point 4 uh this is also increasing correct or i can check there what's my may pace what my accuracy is how i'm setting up this uh, excel it's very basic here we are just saying that okay the formula which i'm using here i am again using it here in the excel and simple error and then the absolute error okay so as soon as you are moving to a higher number of alpha it will respond quickly to the last month and you see that uh, because this data is very smooth that is why you are getting very good forecast accuracy here which is 99% but in real term or in case of actual uh, sale data you will not getting you will not be getting too much smooth data okay so i think i have created all the data like that only but yeah you can have your own data okay so so you just need to put your input data and then uh, you just need to check out that uh, which alpha value makes sense for you you can just create it and you can check your numbers of your forecast and how they are moving correct so this blue line is your forecast and these orange bars are your actuals okay now move to the third point which is regression so regression is very old and uh, very famous uh, you know way of uh, doing the forecast so here what actually we do that we have a uh, actual data and then we have certain factor which may impact your sales or your actual sales so what you do you create a number or a equation in which you try to accommodate that what if none of these are available then what will be my forecast and if these two are available then how much will be my forecast by analyzing your past sales okay so here uh, we don't have any number of predicted sales and residuals i will explain it then how you are going to create it so first let me tell you about the equations so for the equation for the forecast is is that uh, is a beta 0 plus beta 1 and beta 2 so all of these three are coefficient which are here okay and how does this work that beta 0 is a forecast when price and promo are not available and let's say if some price is available that this is the coefficient 
in the presence of price how much is it is going to impact your forecast sales beta 2 is a coefficient in the presence of promo how much it is going to impact the forecast sales okay so how does this work first of all let's say you are going you will be selecting any sku in which you are interested in again uh let me just go again with the one so this is a scatter plot so in which we are just showing that what are these actual data and how they are plotted as a scatter plot now you need to go into your uh, uh data tab correct and here you have a data analysis so in the data analysis you need to select the regression and click ok and then you need to select the y range y range is your actual sales and then your input input x are the factor which are going to impact your actual sales which are price and promo so we have selected like this you are going to select the label so that you can check that which coefficient of what anyway so then uh, you are going to select at which area you want this data so in my case i have selected somewhere here which is behind this uh, chart okay anyway i will go okay so as soon as i click okay uh, then i get this report okay so let me just show you the report if i move this graph here so i am getting this report in this report it is talking about uh, some statistical value that what's the significance of this output and then this anova which is talking about that uh, how much model is efficient correct and then the real value which we are talking about so what are these these are intercept which is b0 correct which is this one okay so what is this b0 it is if there is no price and promos are there then this should be your real demand okay and then you have certain coefficient like minus 0.08 it means when there will be a one unit change in the price it will reduce your demand by this number then you have a promo index then there is a change in any uh, promo by any one unit it will increase by this number okay so what we are going to do we are just going to copy these three and uh let me put this chart above so that you can see and visualize it immediately and i will put all of these three number here okay so as soon as i put these three numbers here all of my predicted sales residuals and absolute error are getting calculated so the line in blue you are saying it's the actual forecast okay then how you are going to create a forecast around it so the forecast let's say if you want to create a new forecast for the future month you can extend this number this sheet to a new cell if you click on this cell you will get that uh, it is looking for the price and promo if there is no price and promo then you will get the forecast is equal to your intercept value okay which is 105.38 let's say if you are going to have a uh, 100 as a price and you are going to have a promotion as well then your forecast will be 102 and you can have that is going to increase so this is how you can create new forecast for the future month as well if you want to create a new forecast after you have realized some numbers here like let's say against 100 you are getting 103 then you again need to calculate this beta 1 beta 2 and beta 0 from the way i already explained and then put those number and you will get again uh a simple uh, promo and price influenced forecast so this is how uh, you can create forecasting with the help of regression and this excel is very simple it is available in the description you can download it at a very minimal price and let me know if you like the video kindly share subscribe and like the video you can also suggest any other topic on which you want a excel tutorial i will be happy to help Thank you. Thanks for watching.